Okay, welcome back. This is part nine of our matrix setting series. I'm Shelley Letwin from GD Design Canada, and thank you so much for sitting in. I hope you've enjoyed the last eight videos and that you're learning stuff and that you will try some of these numbers that I am suggesting. Again, I'm going to stress on every video, these are guidelines that I've developed over the last 20 years of using matrix and teaching matrix. If your setter doesn't agree, listen to them. Any one of your team members, if they're not happy with anything I'm saying, don't argue with them. Just change the numbers to what makes them happy because they're the ones that are ultimately going to make it look beautiful and set the stones securely. Okay, so in this series here, we're going to be talking about pave. Now, we've got three examples here. One... I think on an earlier video I said that I used Auto Pave Builder on this. I was wrong. Sorry. Let's pull the menu down here. I was actually using Multi Gem on Curve, and I really am excited about this tool because with Multi Gem, matrix is laying out the rows, and you're able to adjust the the distance, the space in between the stones and in, I'm not sure if this is X or Y or if this is X and Y, but anyways, you're able to make those adjustments and you can also taper the gems as well. Before they had multi-gem on curve, it was a bit of a pain that, you know, you would extract an ISO curve, get your first row in, and then you'd have to go back in and extract a bunch of ISO curves on one side just to make sure that, that the gemstones are the proper distance away. So that was a bit of a pain in the butt. Okay, so the other thing too is that this multi-gem on curve, it does not have a prong placer. So I was able to use prong builder to lay these out. So if I go ahead and delete these rows, the nice thing about multi-gem on curve is that when you finish, they are all grouped together. Then you can just tap F6 and add your prongs. And again, you want to be mindful that each prong is at least making a connection with these three different gemstones. Then you can press Enter and then do the next row prongs. And it will remember the last measurements that you use. So we'll just press enter. And here, do you just simply mirror this over to X? Or do you just do prong builder again? I'm not sure which is the least amount of clicks there. So again, my measurements on these prongs. So tap F6, edit prongs. What is my distance here? So we're about 0.7. I like that. I kind of like a heavier claw look or prong look but again i'm not the one wearing it so i've got to play nice with my team members and with the client but i do prefer this because i want the stones to be set securely i don't want to lose a stone and again our height is about 0.5 now, the metal thickness, I go about one millimeter. And if you look here, I've got some extra profile curves here. So basically, if I hide this, so let's just hide this layer instead of deleting it. So I've got my inside ring rail, my outside ring rail, tap F6, sweep to history and I'm going to select these two curves that are in between those two rails. So there's the base of my ring. Now these guys are going to help hollow out the ring. Now some people will select this and let's grab our um, scale, tap alt, tap alt while we're moving. So you, you get a plus sign there. So we're making a copy and then I'll hold down shift. Okay, so some people do this for hollowing out, and you kind of have to eyeball the distance, and um, that's good. You know, sometimes I'll use it on signet rings if I want to hollow it out, and it's very quick, but again, I can't guarantee that my wall thickness or my metal thickness is consistent. So what I do is I make another profile, so the same profile, I lower it down, I want one millimeter on either side of this. So if we select this profile, tap F6, and go to MSR, 
we've got six millimeters. Okay, so I'm going to press enter. If I select this one, tap F6, MSR, I have four millimeters. Okay, so we've got one millimeter here, one millimeter there. And the same thing I did on the bottom one. So if I select those two ring rails again, the inside one, let's hold down shift and select the outside one, tap F6, sweep two or sweep two history, doesn't matter, and select these two profiles, then I've got this with the consistency of our metal thickness and the same thing on top. So now I don't want to hollow all the way down the bottom. So then I go to cutters, plane and cube cutters. I get the big box. Okay, then I go to Boolean. You are the object. We're in Boolean difference. You are the cutter. Throw you in the cutter box. Do Boolean. Okay, so I cut away all that excess there. So now you end up being the cutter. And you end up being the object and do boo. And there you go. Okay, so that's that's a little trick that I've been doing for a long, long time. Again, I want consistent metal thickness because it's all about the casting. If you've got a piece where there's a really thick area and then a super thin area, you could run into trouble with the casting. Okay. So with this ring, my distance between our stones here is 0.3, which is the default with the multi-gem on curve, but you can get these a little closer if you want. Okay, now our cuff link here, this was done with our original Pave tool. So if we go into back into gems, and now I gotta go to the second set of gem tools. Here it is, Pave Builder. It was our first Pave Builder. And I struggle with it. I do use it from time to time, not that often. But, you know, in a case like this where I've got the rectangle and, and I'm using the same size gemstones, this works fairly well. And also if I flip it around, we get these nice honeycombs. Okay, Pave Builder, Pave Azure Builder, and Pave Prong Builder all work together and they're broken down in three different categories. And again, you can get some good results, but you do have to play around with it to see what the limitations are and what the benefits are. So in our case here, it was strictly to demonstrate how this builder works. So I had the perfect model with the perfect size gemstones and you may not have that if you're doing custom pieces you may be dealing with customers gemstones and if that's the case if you've got different size gemstones and their customers you may want to go with this method here this luna moth that i created many many years ago and i used gem on surface so i use this tool here and so i was able to lay out the sizes that i had and get the distance that I wanted. And actually on this Luna Moth, if I flip it over, it's just the same image. But I was able to put these honeycombs underneath this Luna Moth. So it's kind of nice that if we go back into gems in the second level, it's kind of nice that this Pave Azure Builder is separated so that you're not just dealing with the Pave Builder. So you can do this on any piece here, this Pave Azure Builder. So the distance between these stones is 0.4. One thing about Pave Builder is that you're not able to choose the distance. It's based on scale. So you have to work with it for a bit to figure out what their distance is going to be based on scale versus measurement. And I've got to tell you, first run Pave Prong Builder, this is not what you're going to get. But when you work with this, and all I can say is these are your three buttons here that you're just going to work with these until you can get them all uniform. And even if you look real close, you can see that these outside ones are not the same size as these inside ones because, again, the inside ones, that's the first one here, and it's a scale factor. But then the next one, shared prong size, it's um, a measurement. And the same thing with the unshared prong. So 
I was able to get a measurement on here, but I had to do a scale factor. And again, I wanted to make sure there was a connection between these three gemstones here. Again, I'm going to remind you, just make sure your plate is thick enough, but not too thick. Now, the other thing about pave is that some setters may want you to just give them a blank slate. Don't do any holes. Just give it to them. They'll drill the holes. They'll lay out the stones the way they want to. Okay, so that's one version. And then there'll be other setters that'll just want you to make the pilot hole. So if we hide the stone, so they just want you to drill out a space, but not add the prongs. They'll go in with their tools and then they'll raise up the bead. So and they may not even want you to cut out with gem cutter 100%. They might just want you to cut it out at a smaller percentage. So you're just basically giving them a, like a pilot hole and then they'll just open it up themselves. And then you've got the other setters that are like, do it all for me. Please drill the holes, add the prongs, and then I just have to go in, you know, place these stones in, blast away, hammer these down. And then I can get on to the next piece. So it's not to say that just because you're all excited that you can do all these things in Matrix. Or if you, even if you don't have Matrix, you're using another software program, but you're sitting in watching what I'm doing here. Doesn't mean that the setter is going to be thrilled with um, the tools and how they print and cast. Okay, and then... Uh, the only thing on here is just make sure that you've got enough space here from your edge as well. You don't want to get too close to the edge. And then on my Luna Moth here, again, as I was mentioning earlier, I use gem on surface to get the gemstones laid out. And the other thing, too, I want to talk about with Pave, when I first was on the bench and I was in school, our setting teacher was this master Pave setter, and he was always telling us, lay out the stones along the edge and then move in and you can see guess what i listen <laughs> i work along the edge here and then you move in to the middle now that's what i learned gem on surface works really well with these organic pieces now there's a big debate that you know a lot of people like this that we've got these beautiful rows and who cares about these edges? Well, I do. I care about these edges a lot. So that's why I struggle with this builder. And perhaps I could come back in here with Gem on Service and tuck in a few smaller stones in here to fill it in. Or I could come back in here with uh, Prong on Surface and fill this all in. But again, I like this look better. Other people will argue that they want to see this look. Who's right and who's wrong? I think we're both right. Or we're both wrong. When I use gem on surface on here, so back to this Luna Moth here, I laid out these gems and different sizes. And again, it still looks pretty nice. And then I did use that Azure Builder to get those honeycombs underneath it. And it turned out very nice, this piece. I still have it and I wear it occasionally. Now, I do want to get back to these organic shapes. A multi-gem on curve worked great with this type of design and pave work great with this type of design now there is another tool that i did mention called auto pave builder so let's pull this down so here's auto pave builder there's four different choices in auto pave builder and i do cover that extensively in my intermediate online class and videos. And I actually do cover these guys extensively as well in the intermediate level. I think I cover this one in the primary level. So I could have used Auto Pave Builder on any one of these options. And again, if you get those videos, uh, you'll see how. But my normal go-to is Multi-Gem on Curve and Gem on Surface. Those are the ones that I'm mostly doing when I've got to do this pave look for any of my clients. Okay, and one last thing too is when you're asked to do a piece with pave, your stone sizes, generally you don't want to use stones that are larger than 2.5 millimeters. That might be the max. Three millimeters are just too big and then your metal thickness be needing a thicker plate if you're using three millimeters now don't turn the job away if they want three millimeters 
I'm just saying that you get a nicer look when the stones are smaller and you get them closer together and a tighter look because pave means paved in French. So that's why your stones are going to be a little bit smaller. You may agree with me that you want them around the edge versus, you know, this honeycombed or hex pattern, as they call it in Matrix. So again, as a reminder for Pave, your stone sizes are 2.5 millimeters or less. Your metal thickness is at least one millimeter. You might be able to go a little thinner if you've got smaller stones, or you might go all the way up to 1.4 for the thickness. Your prongs have to make a connection with the three stones that it's touching. And your height is about 0.5. That you can achieve this honeycomb pattern on any piece that you design because it's not rolled into this pave builder here. And that you may want to use gem on surface so that you can go along the edges and control the spacing in between each stone. Okay, so that's it for Pave. Again, thanks for sitting in and listening to another video. My name is Shelley Letwin. I'm from GV Design Canada. And we've got two more videos to do. So we're almost there at the finish line. So hopefully you'll join us for the last two remaining videos.